Okay, maybe I will start with some kind of introductory remarks. Uh, first of all, I would say that uh, I'm glad that finally uh, we all are here uh, because uh, we planned uh, this uh, event, this AISS workshop, uh, organized together with uh, European Association of uh, Comparative Economic Studies uh, many months ago. Uh, with idea uh, to discuss um, um, new research in the field of public procurement, because it is quite important issues uh, issue for not only for Russia but also for many uh, Central and East European countries, and I am uh, grateful to uh, our uh, Czech and Slovak colleagues uh, for participation in preparation of uh, this this um, workshop uh, dissemination of uh, um, uh, information and so on. Uh, but uh, you can see that uh, world <laughs> uh, changed dramatically actually during last weeks. Uh, so, and uh, it was uh, our decision finally uh, to hold this workshop uh, in online format. So uh, it is uh, for us at least uh, first time experience. Uh, during last weeks, uh, we should transfer also our teaching process uh, to online uh, format and so on. Uh, and for instance, uh, I myself had uh, in this week uh, first uh, a seminar with my students uh, in uh, uh, the, the program for Russian studies. Uh, but the difference is that uh, usually teaching process it is only about one lecture or one seminar. Uh, and here we will have a full day um, academic event. So um, no, in any case, I, I'm sorry in advance uh, if we will face some kind of difficulties, but uh, I, I hope um, all things should work. So, and also I uh, should say um, um, uh, some kind of uh, uh, thanks uh, um, uh, to Yulia Rodionov for all, all uh, organizational efforts because it was really not easy. And uh, I, I hope again uh, it should work, should work finally. So, uh, um, uh, some additional organizational uh, uh, comments. Uh, as you could see all uh, from our program uh, uh, just now, uh, we will have uh, a keynote speech uh, provided by um, uh, Uri Nemitz. Uh, and uh, he asked about 30 or 40 minutes for presentation. And after that, we will have some time for discussion. Uh, but after that, we will have three um, uh, sessions with uh, 10 papers uh, presented during these sessions. Uh, for every uh, paper, we will have, for every presentation, we will have 15 minutes. Uh, and uh, uh, chairs, uh, with help of Yulia, uh, will control uh, the time. Uh, we uh, have also uh, discussions for every presentation, but uh, we decided finally uh, to provide uh, all these comments after all presentations uh, in uh, every session. Uh, so, and uh, probably uh, each uh, discussant will have uh, five to seven minutes for uh, his or her um, uh, comments. Uh, after that, uh, we will, at the end of uh, every session, uh, we will collect all questions uh, uh, and comments. And I would ask uh, all participants uh, to um, indicate uh, during the session uh, using uh, chat. Um, uh, that you would like uh, to ask something or to uh, add some comments and so on and so on. Uh, and uh, chair uh, for every session, we will uh, manage this process. Uh, but as uh, I told already, it will be at the end of session. And uh, finally, uh, at the end of session, I hope we will have some short time for presenters uh, to um, uh, answer on all these uh, comments um, uh, and questions. So, um, also we will have um, uh, two breaks uh, after uh, keynote speech and uh, after uh, second session. And uh, if uh, some of you uh, didn't have enough uh, experience with um, use before, uh, I hoped uh, I hope it will be possible uh, to, to manage all uh, technical issues uh, during these um, uh, breaks. Um, uh, probably with me or with uh, Yulia. So uh, maybe a very last uh, organizational comment is about uh, uh, second uh, uh, or probably third, yeah, third session with four uh, papers. Uh, 
uh, because we discussed it uh, yesterday uh, with uh, our uh, discussions and uh, maybe uh, it would be more rational to provide uh, uh, comments uh, in this uh, session uh, not all these comments at the end, but uh, uh, first comments uh, prepared by discussants after first two uh, uh, papers presented and uh, uh, our um, uh, comments uh, on the last uh, papers in this um, uh, session will be pre uh, presented after uh, all presentations. And again, for this um, uh, session, uh, we will also collect all our um, uh, remarks and questions at the end of session. So, um, I think it's all about uh, technical issues. So, and now I would uh, move to uh, Kenneth's speech of uh, Yura Nemetz. Uh, first of all, I would say that uh, Yura is an uh, old uh, friend and a partner of uh, High School of Economics. Um, uh, first of all, as one of key uh, um, uh, experts in public administration, uh, in uh, Central and uh, Eastern Europe. Uh, he is uh, a professor of finance and public management at uh, Masaryk University in Brno and also at uh, Mate Bell University in uh, Banska Bystrica in Slovakia. So for many years he was uh, president of a uh, network of institutes and schools of public administration in Central and Eastern Europe. So, and uh, now he serves as uh, editor-in-chief uh, of um, a journal on public administration, public policy, uh, uh, published uh, by this network. So, um, uh, actually, we uh, started our uh, cooperation with uh, URI only recently uh, due to um, uh, some papers and uh, uh, research projects uh, in um, uh, the field of public administration led by him and uh, his colleagues. And I see here uh, surely some kind of intersection of uh, interests. So, uh, as you can see from this um, uh, slide, Yurai uh, uh, will uh, talk uh, now about uh, factors determining efficiency of public procurement in Slovakia and more generally in Central and East, uh, Eastern Europe. So, and I hope uh, it will be of interest for all of us. So, and uh, um, I hope that finally this workshop under all uh, current difficulties uh, and so on and so on, um, will uh, provide for us uh, new interesting opportunities. So, okay, uh, Juraj, you can start if you are ready. Okay, I think, I th thanks very much, Andre, for introducing myself mm -hmm. and for the opportunity to participate in yeah. this workshop. Uh, hope Everybody can see the screen with the presentation. Yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, concerning introduction, maybe one extra issue. I am not so much interested in modeling public procurement, mm -hmm. but I am interested in functional public procurement. Also because already in 1991, I was member of working group to draft the first public procurement law in Slovakia. So it's more or less 20 years, 30 years now, <laughs> 30 years. <laughs> like time is running of experience with public procurement system and of a lot of stress or trauma, seeing that the system is not working and delivering. And you should have very similar experience. So I prefer especially positive approach Mr. Ivanov is also uh, participating. I know he is very technical, but I try to be mainly connected to practice and even with academic papers uh, to try to spread messages how to improve the functioning of the system. Okay, uh, let's go to presentation. Yeah. It's based, as you can see, on our long-term research and uh, materials prepared also by my colleagues, especially Matusz Grega and Marta Orviska are used. Uh, the goal or purpose of this paper, or what, I, what will be presented now, is to try to define main factors determining efficiency or functioning of public procurement in Slovakia 
and according to my experience and knowledge, these factors are very, very similar to situations in all other countries in our region. And then also to illustrate some of problems connected. So to say, or to try to say, to determine some of core factors and to speak about some of them. Uh, how did we try or what was the methodology to try to define main factors? The most important was questionnaire and uh, we have sent it to almost all suppliers and contracting authorities in Slovakia and I will show later on response rate. And we also used experts and secondary data analysis. Uh, I always try to have combination in qualitative and quantitative approaches in papers because sometimes mathematics or statistics can deliver very crazy results. So we compared results from questionnaire with experts and also opinions and for sure we used some secondary data analysis. Uh, I don't, normally I don't have a lot about theory or literature review and also here I can, I just have one slide. Uh, everything what will be mentioned in this paper or in my presentation is connected especially with theory of transaction costs and transactions costs, transaction costs are very important and from as I indicated I like practical point of view and the remark is there we can in many cases we can have much higher transaction costs than direct benefits from some process. Uh, it's very critical in public procurement when we use overcomplicated procedures we may have too much transparency and not delivering any results. If somebody wants uh, to hear example about transaction costs in direct figures, uh, it's we don't have, we have some data and I will show for public procurement, but to illustrate the situation, the best case in our condition, Slovakia or Czech Republic are local taxis. Some small municipalities have to spend five euros or even more to collect one euro. Or if we deal uh, with uh, taxis by entrepreneurs, we calculated that self-entrepreneurs in Slovakia have to spend eight euro to pay one euro of tax. Clearly indicated that the system is terribly complicated, can deliver small savings, but for high level of transaction costs. Uh, the second issue which is covered by the presentation is corruption and you can see in bold we now start to speak about systemic corruption and I really suggest to everybody to read papers or works especially uh, in Czech Republic on this topic in Czech Republic it's especially longer uh, and so his supervisor Franciszek Ochrana Langer is now defending his PhD thesis on this topic and I, for many, many years, I did not read so nice dissertation and so open dissertation. And another issue which is important is competitiveness in public procurement, but it's not in, everybody understands. So let's go to our research. As indicated, we tried to send as many questionnaires as possible online and we received uh, uh, relatively good response rate for this kind of research and we have representative sample of Slovak entrepreneurs supplying to government and also of pu also public procurers in Slovakia. And we combined responses from questionnaire but waiting of main by wait waiting of main factors by expert panel. Yeah. It was also necessary because opinions or answers by suppliers and procurement officials were different. I will show it. 
So if you look on answers from procuring entities, procurement officials, most of them mentioned as a core problem, excessive bureaucracy and frequent legislative changes is interlinked. Corruption was only third. Okay, it's somehow possible to understand that they will not put it to the top. They also were able to see limited competitiveness. And what is interesting, they indicated that limited motivation is delivering passive waste. I will return to explanation of this expression. If we look on factors by suppliers, they have corruption as a first one, but you can see almost the same number of uh, or non-ethical behavior and corruption is the same, but you can see more or less the same number of answers as also excessive bureaucracy. Then they speak about low quality of control, uh, uh, non-respecting or limited state of the law and limited competition. Uh, as indicated, we tried to put everything together. So ranking by procurers, ranking by suppliers and expert opinion. And according to this combination of all three inputs, we feel that the most important problem in Slovak public procurement, and I'm sure everywhere in our region, is excessive bureaucracy, including or delivering high transaction costs, and almost the same problem or the same level problem is corruption and ethics. Yeah? Frequent legislative changes are more I indicated, I connected also to bureaucracy. Then uh, what was not very frequently mentioned by procurers and suppliers, but experts are very aware, the problem is too frequent or inappropriate use of lowest price criterion to select the winner. Then let's say we can have something about law and we can see also a problem of competitiveness but uh, according to us, three stars, or according to complex evaluation, three stars is bureaucracy, corruption, lowest price, and competitiveness is a second star. There are some studies that also with small, in our region, also with small number of participating tenderers, still results are possible. So this is maybe explaining only two stars and quality of control has two stars. So this is a list of core problems. I am sure that everybody participating in this session understands them and was able or already had a lot of research on at least a few from these topics. So this is the way how we identified core problems. And now I can continue with uh, some illustration of problems found. I already indicated excessive bureaucracy, frequent legislative changes, significantly increased transaction costs, and also maybe not decreased competition. Uh, in Slovakia, I'm sure in Ukraine, because I, I was working in Ukraine for a while as a consultant in public procurement. Public procurement is administrative task. Uh, working in Ukraine, I had very, or I used, I put very, let's say, critical or problematic, even almost stupid question to procurement officials participating. Is public procurement more management or more administration? The problem of Ukrainian officials, procurement officials was, the answer of Ukrainian officials was the same for everybody, it's administrative procedure. However, I was trained for procurement in United Kingdom. The school does not exist anymore. And you may even know that they don't have procurement legislation, but their procurement processes are evaluated as top level. And for them, procurement is management. 
So to achieve goals, not to fulfill uh, administrative, net all these administrative requirements and points. To achieve or lowest economy or efficiency, everything else is sub, should be subordinated. Even transparency, according to my opinion, should be subordinated to efficiency or economy, depending on situation. Yeah. The problem of frequent legislative changes, and I will document it on figures, is connected with problem which is also common for our region. If our governments or frequent, more frequently media discover some problem in implementation of some process, we react normally by legislative changes, not by implementation of best practices, not by improving processes, but we have new law or we amend the law, we put extras, and in few years, we, in few de sometimes even in few months, we again change, again change, again there are other gaps or other gaps are created, again we try to close these gaps, and I will show the results, for example, on Slovak situation on this, but I really don't like this. And it, uh, in, if you have processes like public procurement and frequent legislative changes, there is no chance. You, here you can he see data. In a ten, we investigated in Slovakia 10 years period and the public procurement law was changed 35 times limits up and down, X and so on and so on. Six changes in one year. Yeah. Six changes in one year. So uh, if somebody wants even to control something, you are first to search, uh, which was a valid legislation for that concrete case. And how to train and retrain public procurers, how to train, how to spread information and so on. It's totally impossible. Yeah. Six legislative changes in one law in one year. And it's also about the size and contents of public procurement law. Here is a table. Uh, our first law, which was, we, we prepared, I was a member of the team as indicated, we prepared it in 1993. The size was 14 pages. According to my opinion, this law could be used also today. This may be a good set of guidelines and uh, examples, explanations, and so on. Today, Slovak, uh, today, maybe it's even bigger today because there were some legislative changes, but this one is still valid with amendments. It was 259 pages of public procurement law. Really makes no sense, and I will even show some reactions of, from questioners, from uh, responses by procurers and suppliers. Uh, I should know it a lot about procurement, but I'm not able to understand some parts of public procurement law in Slovakia today. And I have a very good friend who is delivering advisory services in public procurement. He tells me, uh, his statement is that there are maybe 30 contradictions between articles. The law is too long, too comprehensive, and some articles contradict. So if you fulfill requirements of one article, you may not fulfill requirements of another article. Uh, Extremely complicated and totally unnecessary. Slovakia is a member of European Union, and some countries were clever from this point of view. They have very small national legislation on smaller scale procurement, and they simply say there are European directives, and let's follow European directives for over limit procurement. Anyhow, European directives are valid. Even if the Slovak law would be different, four cases regulated by European Union. European Union legislation is valid. So I don't understand why we need to copy and paste the European directives into our law and complicating law, uh, situation of everybody. 
but you can see. For me, 20 pages of public procurement law should be still enough also today. Here you have some expression, and I really like the first one. The Slovak public procurement law is not for humans. It's enough. Yeah? It's enough. You need, there are few, maybe 10 highly specialized people who deliver these advisory services in practice who really understand everything what is in the law. Uh, administrative costs connected with bureaucracy. Uh, this is data by external research. And you can see the problem of length of public procurement procedure. Uh, just to prepare yeah, uh, or to do administrative steps is without a review process. In Slovakia, according to this source, contracting authority needs 38 days, suppliers need 30 days to prepare tender documentation. It's a bit too much, a bit easy. Not, you understand how I want to, or how I understand a bit. Uh, we have also our research from Czech Republic about administrative costs and uh, Companies responded to us, especially small companies don't have so high costs, but for them also 5% uh, of estimated price is relatively a lot. And big companies which compete in comprehensive tenders have direct costs. This is direct costs here. They have to spend 10 to 15% of estimated price to deal with bureaucracy of bureaucratic procedures of public procurement. And they are also indirect costs. And you can see uh, they are estimated as very, very high. Uh, indirect costs are, for example, connected with this table. Really many tenders are cancelled. This means uh, you spend a lot of money, or especially private companies spending using a lot of money to prepare tender, then public body organizing procurement decides to cancel tender. It's disaster, you can see. And in Slovakia, there are no specialized procurement courts where maybe like in some other countries, this private company could claim this kind of costs. So it's a lot of waste. Uh, this is Czech Republic data. You can see they are in terrible situation. In some cases, 50% of council tenders. And uh, you can see article here by our colleagues from Czech Republic, M Michal is present in our meeting, telling about other factors which increase the length of procedure. So this and, and indirect costs are connected, especially uh, I indicated also the problem of council tenders, but especially the length and complicate complications of procedure. If, if there is larger scale procurement in Czech Republic, in most cases, you can expect that there will be complaint and so on and so on. Michal maybe will comment or can comment on this. Uh, I also indicated or promised to speak about passive waste. And uh, we were able to confirm it in our conditions, simply in this kind of complicated environment. If there is no ex ante, collusion, this is this longer, this systemic corruption. So even if procurement case is clean without phase zero, where everything is decided, which is typical, uh, still bureaucrats or public procurement officials who are responsible for procurement decide for most safe solution, not for most effective, efficient, but for safe solution. But in most cases, safe, product, safe solution is not efficient. Uh, I will show it. It's connected with lowest price criterion. And 
I will speak about this issue in few minutes. So because of very complicated legislative environment and many other factors connected to it, even in so-called clean procurement, we have a lot of passive waste because everybody wants to be safe and to prevent any problem caused by control later on. Yeah. Here is about phase zero. So according to Langer, and the, we, we switch to corruption, not to forget. So from bureaucracy, we switch to corruption. And uh, here, this is a systemic corruption issue with phase zero. And according to Langer, this is a phase where everything is decided. So who will be the winner and how the rent will be distributed. And Langer is documenting uh, this phenomena on concrete cases, concrete examples. It's nothing uh, artificial, it's reality. I know it very well from practice. And if we speak about corruption, the necessary question is how to fight corruption in public procurement. And I'm not very optimistic. I don't think there is use ready medicine available. And in all countries everywhere in worldwide, even in most developed, most democratic countries, if we speak about large scale procurement, there is a lot of corruption there. But if we look on examples from developed countries on smaller scale cases, some solutions are visible. I still remember meeting with local sheriff in the United States and stupid Easterners, sorry for that expression, asked the, or we asked the stupid question, why do you not manipulate procurement of cars for your office? And the answer was not surprising for me. I am really not ready to read my name in media for a few thousand dollars. So if we speak about smaller cases, smaller scale procurement, if we have price benchmarking, performance control, and some kind, for sure also some ethical codexes, but I am not, I don't trust too much to ethical codexes and so on. Good practices, we should be able to cope with small scale cases, even to eliminate them maybe. Yeah, this is confirmation of uh, the, uh, this zero phase mentioned or defined by Langer by one expression of contracting official. We do not, as a contracting officials, we don't get, generate corruption. Corruption is between top managers and suppliers. So this is about phase zero. It's confirmed by one of responses to our questionnaire. This is a case which I indicated. According to my opinion, long-term working in procurement area, lowest price, this means economic criterion, can be used for standard, or may be used even, not can, may be used, can be used for standard goods. I don't like it in services and works, and the European Union already discovered this problem, and the new directives says that it's extraordinary criterion, not directly, but more or less say it's extraordinary criterion. We have a little bit older data on this, but the situation does not change. And you can see the situation in Western countries where works are procured according to meat or best bid. And other countries where in some cases, Almost 100% of tenders for works is lowest price, economy-based. This is disaster. Michal is from Czech Republic. He knows cases where, for example, highway construction was procured. It's the same in Poland, procuring of highway construction on lowest price. And the results are still very visible. In Slovakia, we also procured one tunnel by pushing just price down. The construction work stopped and the finally the tunnel will be three times or four times more expensive than the plant. So 
it should be somewhere, not here, but we are not so rich to buy the lowest price. This is expression not by myself. And according to my opinion, this is one of the top mistakes in our public procurement process. Uh, in my, as of today, last consultancy mission in Serbia, we tried to develop uh, guidelines for using of meat. And all countries should have good guidelines for using of meat. So this is most economically advantageous standard. Okay, competitiveness. The last issue, if I remember well, my presentation, also time is running. Most studies say that we should have about six bits to achieve good market or to achieve really good savings. It's a question, what are savings? Normally savings are calculated as a difference between estimated and final price. In other conditions, you have to be aware that this is very bad or not very bad, but uh, the validity of such calculation is very, very low. We have already several cases or examples investigated in depth, clearly showing that estimated prices are higher than necessary. But anyhow, let's say that there should be some competition for tenders and uh, from competition, we can have some savings, economic theory supporting such expectation. And the situation is terrible in our region. The competitiveness is extremely low. We have the most recent data from healthcare sector in Slovakia. And you can see we have two to three bits per one case. Three is maximum as an average for one year, not maximum. We, there are very few cases with more than three, but uh, the yearly average, maximum yearly average was three and something. Okay. I think I was exactly speaking about 30 minutes and I hope I created a lot of options or possibilities for discussion. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, thank you very much for this broad uh, overview. Uh, unfortunately, I should say that uh, um, this picture is very similar uh, um, to our uh, feeling and attitude about um, Russian situation. But perhaps in our case, uh, such kind of development was even quicker because uh, we introduced the real um, more or less comprehensive regulation in, public, in, in the field of public procurement in mid-2000s, in 2005, 2006. So it was exactly the same uh, story with a huge increase uh, in the number of articles, in the volume of these laws, and so on and so on. Yeah. Unfortunately, it is really the same, the same story. And the, the problem uh, what uh, I see here uh, is some kind of trap because we tried on our side uh, uh, to tell about these things, about transaction costs and so on and so on, many times in different forms, but unfortunately without any um, serious attention um, from public authorities, from regulators and so on. So it's a bit strange, but yeah. But in any case, um, uh, what about uh, questions or comments from audience? Uh, colleagues uh, who is uh, ready or who would like to um, uh, ask some questions or maybe to um, uh, provide some comments. Can I start? Yeah, yeah please, Paula. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So thank you very much for uh, this nice presentation. And uh, for me, uh, it was really uh, surprising all this uh, number of law in the same changes in the law in the same year. And obviously, as you mentioned, this is really a problem because uh, you, it is very difficult to, uh, to provide some evidence if there are all these changes uh, uh, time to time, at least from the side of research uh, on data and on some um, empirical evidence. But uh, uh, my comment is um, on another point, which is about uh, um, this uh, um, uh, extension of rules in, uh, in, the, in this kind of uh, procurement. So 
you, I remember that you mentioned that from uh, the law in 1993, uh, where you had something like 14 pages, actually you, are, you have uh, a law or a regulation with more than 200 pages. So uh, this means that this process is really highly regulated. And uh, here there is this uh, um, debate about uh, rules versus discretion. So, which is uh, the well-known debate uh, uh, raised by Kelman on uh, the uh, US uh, procurement. So uh, my point is, uh, uh, do you have any evidence that uh, uh, public procurers or all these uh, public officials in charge of uh, procurement uh, need to have this, all these kind of uh, rules because they are not well prepared, because they don't want to take responsibility or whatever, or it is something that comes uh, just a reaction uh, to the, the potential corruption. Because uh, uh, obviously the more are these rules uh, and uh, the most costly will be the process, as you uh, mentioned in, uh, in the survey, which is some, the perception is that you need a lot of time to, uh, to, to prepare uh, a procurement procedure on the public side, but also on the supplier side. But uh, you could have, uh, you could need much less time if you have uh, more discretion and le less rule to, to follow. But the problem is why they, they want to have all these rules and they don't want to give discretion to the public buyer. This is the question. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, Alexander Chisovsky, if you would like, you can ask also your question. Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, you're right, thanks for the presentation. I have a little question, uh, maybe a little bit the same as Paula asked. Um, uh, so, you're right, you said in the beginning of the presentation that uh, procurements are still more administrative process than managerial. So, as I guess, uh, it's uh, making it uh, less effective as we want to. Uh, but also, I know that a lot of people say that uh, this to make it more administrative uh, can help uh, to avoid corruption, to make corruption uh, less. And the arguments that uh, regulations, rules, documentation, they help to avoid corruption. And if we make it more uh, free, more material, we give more freedom to managers, uh, it, will can, uh, it will cause uh, the increase uh, of corruption. So uh, what can you say about it? Because uh, as I know, it's a discussion of our country also, it's important here. And so maybe you can uh, give a comment about that. Uh, would it? So thanks. Okay. Okay. Maybe because these two questions overlap. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Please. I can try to respond. My personal opinion: all this bureaucracy in procurement does not limit corruption at all. And you can read. Uh, this is why I really like the dissertation. I was reviewer of dissertation by Langer, and he's clearly explaining with examples how the system works today. These top officials and suppliers meet before the procurement is announced. So in the phase of preparation of tender documentation, they agree everything. And after they have this preliminary agreement, they follow all legal requirements. Mm -hmm. No problem. Because uh, with in Slovakia and everywhere in our region, uh, we have a little of performance control. Most of control is compliance. Did you make A, B, C, D? Yes, everything is formally OK. And then the process is OK. That's the result, which I can see everywhere, that the price of table purchased is double or three times more. That is the standard marketplace. This starts only to be investigated today. Uh, last two or three years in Slovakia, or also a little bit in Czech Republic, somebody started to care uh, about also results. We have done research all, more than 15 years ago, but nobody was ready to follow. It was benchmarking in hospitals. And uh, we showed that hospitals are purchasing medicaments for higher prices 
than the ordinary citizen compared to ordinary citizen purchasing in pharmacy. But there was no response, nothing happened. Today, there start, we, some awareness concerning final prices starts to happen, but still the focus is on procedure. And I indicated the issue of passive waste or bureaucratic safety. If public procurement official who is even not corrupted understands that the control will be about the process, not about the results, and that there is no discretion. You can see with 300, uh, 260 pages legislation, all steps, everything is prescribed. So there is no discretion. And we, uh, even if there is discussion, I in one of our seminars uh, on high level between NISPASI and ECPA, it was about legality versus efficiency in public administration, a very interesting topic. Uh, there was a question, if we have case in public procurement, it was my question, where by bypassing the legislation, we can save a lot, can we use this opportunity or cannot? Response from Eastern Europe was cannot. Yeah. So the priority is legality. And the main problem, even if we have legality and transparency, this does not limit corruption in our region today. Uh, those high level people who manipulate procurement today have also good advisors who can tell them how to manipulate results in fully correct, legally correct way. This is a problem, this is a situation. So in most cases, these standards are okay, or even you can have electronic market for something and then you only, uh, and can, so the revision procedures, complaints, or controls cannot even find the problem. But the result is still defined ex ante, and corruption is there. The highest level of corruption is in IT services, where sometimes prices are 10 or more times more expensive than necessary. So this is about this topic. It's really typical for our region. We have a lot of rows and a lot of com uh, compulsory procedures, very limited discretion, and process is more important than compared to result. And this cannot be changed today. Uh, this is long-term process to educate, to teach our public administration system the discretion is also important and results are most important. Two or three years ago, Slovakia established value for money unit at Ministry of Finance. Small step forward. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you. Uh, Alexander Ivanov, you would ask one more question. Yeah, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, dear Yuri, I'm uh, very happy to see you again. Um, may I ask you a small question? Uh, if uh, public procurement uh, legislation of Slovakia has some parts different from uh, uh, European directives, when uh, there is a question, uh, what uh, do you think about the role of regulatory impact assessment in the country? Is it influence uh, the quality of uh, public procurement regulation. Okay, I can answer immediately. Yeah. Uh, Slovakia is member of European Union. So for all public procurement regulated by European directives, European directives are valid. Slovak law is not valid. This is why I mentioned we don't need parts in our procurement law about procurement over limit. It's totally unnecessary because European legislation is written. And we even did not copy and paste it. We converted it to another set of crazy and uh, mixed or uh, articles without real order and so on. And I had already a regulatory impact assessment on my paper, a little bit to react to Paola. Uh, 
in Slovakia, again, it's European Union, maybe also Russia, RIA is compulsory for each law. So each change of the law, each new law should be supported by RIA. But there is a lot of research. The best person on this is Katarina Staroneva from Comenius University in Bratislava, documenting that RIA is not working at all. It's totally formal in our region. Our administrators are not able to calculate indirect costs. So somehow they can calculate direct costs for public administration system. But they totally don't care about indirect costs by cons uh, or citizen and business. They, to comply with some legislation costs a lot of money, time and so on. Our legislators don't care. They produce legislation because they want to show that they fight corruption or that they uh, uh, respond, they are responsible. That's all. But the legislation is useless or extremely expensive. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, any other questions from our audience? No, if no, maybe one more question or uh, partially comment from me. Uh, no, I think it is also about some kind of internal political economy, because I suppose that practically all um, actors uh, understand uh, inefficiency of current regulation. But it's the question why um, there is no real response. It is with some kind of a shortage of um, opportunities uh, on the side of uh, relevant actors uh, or some kind of distort distorted incentives or, or, or what? No, and more, more broader question. Uh, how it's possible to um, uh, change this situation? And who could initiate uh, this uh, process? No, for instance, in your case in Slovakia. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is political economy. This is political science and maybe also psychology and so on. Very comprehensive and question. Uh, today in Slovakia, I don't think that there is any fast track to change this because if I start with political sciences, uh, today in our, everywhere in the world, it's not anymore specific for our region, we deliver politics, not policy. Mm -hmm. So politicians just show that they act or something to help to citizen. But in most cases, it's just politics to get with even stupid uh, arrangements, stupid changes to get some extra votes. And this is extremely critical in our region but if you look on US or United Kingdom today, they also elected politicians, which I feel are not extremely clever, let's say. Uh, and simply it's politics. So I show something popular to my citizen to get extra vote or to increase my popularity. And it's not important what is the real content. So maybe this is the answer from political science point of view. And it's also interconnected with public choice theory. So there is, if I come very, I'm not sure if it, everybody likes Lenin, but many years ago he told that politics is just concentrated economy. Mm -hmm. And because Smith has the same expression, it's yeah, yeah. Really, <laughs> in this case, we have the same expression in Western world. So it says something. And if you look on Marx, he has the same, uh, this basis and, so it should, everything is determined. So the economy is here, then the politicians perform just to show willingness to serve, but most of them don't want to serve to citizen. This is not short-term process, not short-term process. And uh, sorry to speak about Lenin, but hope you don't hate him. Uchica, uchica, uchica. <laughs> we have to educate our citizen. Our Russian citizen, our 
Slovak citizen ready to protect democracy? No. Today. Many more years. And in such situations, simply politicians show the willingness to act. And they even know it will not have any results. But it's to show, to demonstrate willingness. This is some kind of explanation. And I am afraid during my age, we will not be able, or my life, we will not be not able to change it. It's mm -hmm. a long, long-term process. Sorry not to be too optimistic, but I try to be realist. Yeah, yeah, I understand you, yeah. Uh, no, maybe, uh, yeah, mm, uh, Alexander Nesterov had uh, also one question. Yeah, please, you can ask. Hello, uh, so I'm not sure if I'm, yeah. okay, should be fine. Okay, so uh, I, I I sensed a, a bit of contradiction in in your in your desired uh, characteristics of the of the legislation, which is which is fine because they have to be trade-offs. So first of all, I'm not sure that a long legislation is necessarily uh, unclear. Um, people were talking about a specialist. Uh, so Russian uh, legislation is very long and for me uh, very hard to, to to understand. But if I uh, was an expert. If I really had experience, if I worked uh, with this on the daily basis, then I would know uh, just one page that I need to know uh, to, uh, to to run my procedures. Uh, Russian legislation is uh, long, I think, mostly because it prescribes uh, many possible procedures that that you can use. Um, what I think is missing is is the discretion on the on the part of the procurer which exactly uh, procedure, procedure he's allowed to use. Uh, so the legislation actually tells him uh, what he uh, can do, and this uh, choice is usually uh, ve very narrow. So uh, um, would you agree that um, there, there has to be more more discretion on the uh, on 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 this part? So what procedure uh, should be uh, should be chosen for particular uh, for a particular case? Um, uh, for instance, uh, you. Uh, you 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 criticize that uh, so uh, many deals are, are, are made just based on the um, uh, lowest price. Um, well, but if you want uh, to have other procedures, you have to uh, to describe. Them, and there are so so many of them. So there are um, there are different uh, contests and, uh, and so on. Uh, from what I, I know, and you have to describe them. And then the legislation is uh, is is long. Uh, but should the procurers have the uh, the, the, the opportunity to choose which one of them to use uh, for, for the case uh, they need. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks very much for this question. It's, uh, I don't want to be rude to you, so don't take it personally, but it's clearly showing the problem of our region. Uh, I was trained in United Kingdom for procurement. They even don't have legislation, but uh, what they have is a lot of guidelines. So what you are speaking about are guidelines, short legislation and guidelines for each concrete case. So this is my, I decide this is my case and I use this guideline. One of my colleagues, we delivered a lot of training on procurement in nineties. What he told, his typical expression, do you know what is the difference between procurement in Slovakia and in Austria? Procurement official in Slovakia opens his shelves with documentation and shelves are empty. It's only the law. Procurement official in Austria opens his shelf and he has examples, best practices, guidelines for each concrete case. So it should not be part of the law. It must be in your shelf, now in your computer because we are in electronic uh, period. So in your computer, you have to find everything pre-filled, already prepared files to deliver to, pre to do everything. It should not be part of the law. This is my very simple response. The law should be short. If it's too long, it contradicts and it does not allow for discretion. It should say or, or, and you have the choice. I think it's still valid in United Kingdom if public uh, body is purchasing 10 or 15 cars, and it's not centralized procurement, it can be, but if it's just own purchase, they simply open the list of qualified suppliers and send request for prices to 10 of them. That's all. And it's possible. 
You don't need long below for this. And next time they select another 10 qualified suppliers, just to give chance to everybody. So it's management. Okay, I hope it's enough, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. So actually I'm agree because uh, in my opinion, one of maybe probably the key problems uh, uh, in, in Russia to also, and I suppose in Eastern Europe, is some kind of uh, distrust uh, yeah. between authorities uh, and um, uh, public entities with some kind of assumption yeah. that uh, people at lower level are corrupted. Yeah. It's a basic assumption, yeah. And it is not so in uh, Europe and in many other countries, yeah. But it is maybe in some sense a cultural issue. And also maybe some kind of he, 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 power de dependency on our history. Uh, some kind of uh, heritage from uh, the planned economy and so on, yeah. Okay, now actually uh, our time for this session is over. If there is no other questions or comments, um, I would uh, thank you, uh, Yurai, for this um, really very broad and useful uh, lecture. So, um, okay, thank you very much. Thanks also. Yeah. Okay, so we will have now uh, the break now for half hour. And uh, as I told already before, uh, if you need some kind of uh, technical help and assistance and so on, so on, especially if you didn't have uh, enough experience um, with Zoom, um, you can ask me or Yulia Radionova um, uh, and we uh, are ready to help you. And I will switch uh, the, the rights of organizers now to, to, to Yulia for, for, for next sessions. So, Okay, so thank you again.